Alright, how to perform phlebotomy correctly. First things first, make sure you have your PPE on, which is your gloves, your lab coat, and protective eyewear. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to identify your patient in front of you. You need to make sure you have their full name and their birth date for identifiers. And then first things first, you're going to put the tourniquet on. And you're going to find the vein. So you're going to fill around for a vein. Once you've found a good vein, then you can start preparing for the phlebotomy. So first you're going to get your alcohol swab out. Set that right there. Then you're going to grab some gauze, then you're going to grab your needle, and then the hub. And then you take this gray part off, and you have to be careful because there's still a needle, a needle underneath the gray. And then you twist it into your hub and make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want the needle to come out when you're sticking someone. And then I set that off to the side. Grab your tubes, make sure you have them in order and they're out and ready. Then you're gonna clean the venipuncture site. You're gonna take your alcohol swab, clean it, make sure it's nice and clean. You're gonna let that dry and put the tourniquet back on. All right, and then when, before you take this cap off, make sure you're slow and careful so you don't hit yourself with a needle. You're going to make sure that the bevel is up facing you and you're going to anchor with your thumb so you make sure the vein is stable and then you just put the needle in. You're going to grab your tube and you're going to slowly put the tube in the hub so that you don't push the needle back into the patient. And then you're going to fill your tube up. You're going to pull it out gently, invert it to mix the anticoagulant, then you're going to take the tourniquet off, put your gauze on and slowly take the needle out, put your protective cap on and throw it in the sharps. Now you're going to have your patient hold the gauze while you wrap them. And then while your patient is in front of you, you're going to write their name and date of birth on the tube. Can I get your name? patient, and then date of birth, just like that. So today we're talking about the difference between the vacutainer phlebotomy method and the butterfly method. Um, one of the main differences, obviously, is it has a tubing instead of this needle just being attached to the hub right here. Um, a lot of people like this a little bit better because it has these wings on it that we can easily maneuver a little bit better into the patient arm. Um, it also has the tubing, which helps with putting the tubes in place. Like it's not as difficult. You don't have to worry about wiggling as much because you can have your, your hand placed right here and be moving it with your other hand down here. Um, with this butterfly, because it has this tubing, we have to use a waste tube because typically the first tube we draw is the light blue um, and that has that one to nine ratio that's really important and so we want to make sure that it's completely filled with blood. So before you draw your, your light blue, you have to have a waste tube. It can be, um, this is specifically a waste tube, but it can be like another red or another blue, just something that you discard before you draw into your light blue to use for testing. Go. So another topic that's really important with phlebotomy is the order of draw. Um, we have these specific guidelines and tube orders so that things can be drawn correctly and they don't cross contaminate or get EDTA tubes or you know like additives in other tubes that aren't supposed to be um, and that the testing can run smoothly and we don't have to redraw things. So we always start with blood cultures and the reason that they're first is to de decrease the chance for contamination um, so that you can tell if something is actually pathogenic as opposed to just normal flora. And then we start with the light blue and this one's first of the, the small tubes because it has to have that one to nine ratio with the sodium citrate in that tube. And this is the tube we use for all of our coag testing. The next one is red. And this is just typically a plain tube. It only really has clot activators in there um, and it can be used for most general chemistries. The same thing with the gold. So the only difference is it usually has this, this gel separator in it that will separate the serum from the cells. And that is also used for chemistries. Um, the dark green is very similar as well, except for it's 
um, an anticoagulant in there, which is lithium heparin, and it produces plasma instead of serum. And we use these, um, this darker um, green is for stat chemistry typically. And the same for lights, it's not much different. Um, typically the lighter greens are more common, but they, again, do the chemistries. Um, this is a less common tube, the royal blue. Um, there's two different types. We only have one here today. This is the EDTA one. Um, and it tests for heavy metals. And then after that one, we have our lavender, which is our basic hematology. Um, it has the EDTA, which is an anticoagulant, and it also produces plasma if you were to spin it down and separate the cells. Um, the last one is the gray, and it's sodium fluoride. Um, we usually only do glucose and lactic acids in these. And again, it's really important to follow these so that all these testings and the the analyzers, you know, don't get confused and you can produce the right results with the proper tube.